What is up? Welcome back to the channel. So today is the second video in the series Tim Tries. Um, it's probably not a series just yet because it's only my second video, but we'll see what comes from it. If I like it, I'll probably keep doing it. Um, I'm stealing this concept from Scott Tolinsky, whom I interviewed a couple of weeks ago, and he does this really well. He just goes to a new service or a new piece of software, just tries it out and see what happens. So these are like legit first experiences. Um, today, I'm going to try out Microsoft Azure's static web apps. Um, this was recently released, and it's kind of like a competitor for Netlify or for Fursal. And probably being Microsoft, they add a whole bunch of extra features because they have this whole cloud platform, right? There must be a whole bunch of other things as well. So today I'm going to do the legit first look. I've not done this before. The only thing I have is an Azure account because I've used their um, Azure functions before. Um, I'm just gonna see if I can actually take my own web blog, which is a Gritsome static site, a Jamstack site, if I can de deploy that quickly or you know, smoothly, I don't know, whatever, um, with uh, static web apps of Azure. So let's do this. <music> All right, first of all, let's have a look at the Azure Static Web Apps um, website to see what they offer so I can learn a little bit of what I'm going to be doing, right? Um, funny thing, before this, I tried to Google like Azure Static Sites and you get like articles from 2018 where they introduce blob storage. There's nothing about this. And this is kind of funny, right? Because Microsoft offers so many solutions, especially on Azure, so many things. It's, it's really funny that I, I couldn't find this thing, even though it's like their new big awesomeness. So I had to go to um, different Twitter accounts of people I follow. It's like, oh yeah, it's actually it's Azure static web apps, not static sites. I found it. So a modern web app service that offers streamlined full stack development from source code to global high availability. That is some sentence, awesome. That is well written. It, it also covers a lot of cool stuff. Um, they give you a free trial. I do have a trial, you can, I do have an account. You can see I'm logged in. Um, so let's have a look. So develop modern web apps fast with global reach and scale. Sure, it's, it's like Netlify or Versal, it's, it's similar. So um, productivity from local development to GitHub native workflows with CI CD. Actually, this is interesting. So this is like, they are now connecting the GitHub universe to the Azure universe. And I think that's like GitHub actions and stuff. And I'm really interested to see how that works um, once we start this up. Okay, managed global availability for static content. So this is just a CDN edge, I would assume like Netlify offers. Uh, dynamic scale for serverless API. So this is their Azure functions like Amazon Lambda functions that Netlify actually uses. And then streamlined management, including custom domain configuration, authentication and authorization. That's pretty cool too. So reading from that and from what I know from the MS Build conference, they kind of have certain routes could you need to authenticate or you cannot see certain things with certain roles and you can have a custom domain. Um, I don't think today we're gonna go into that because it's probably gonna be a little video that's a bit too long. I just want to see the first step. So all of you who do Jamstack can make an account and actually run with a website quickly. Okay, so it's all CI, CD, it's GitHub. Yeah, so this is kind of the, the Jamstack approach, right? And they also have Azure functions. This is cool. Um, app lifecycle management, build with confidence, sure. Um, you know what, why don't we just jump in? So let me just go to portal.azure.com. Beam. Okay, logged in. Always when I see this interface, it's a little bit jarring to me. There's like so much stuff and the design is so um, tech focused. It's not that friendly. Then again, it's generally really techy people going in here. And um, you can see I have my Faltech account. I've been luckily given this by my company. This is great. Um, so what I think is we're going to have to create a resource. And most likely, we're just going to search for static. Yeah. 
That was pretty easy. I did not expect that to be here. Here we go. Okay, so um, there are different plans. I have my own Valtech subscription, so I should be able to just create. Okay. It's not as um, scary as I thought. Uh, there's some scroll bar here though. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> okay, let, let's just not look at how they did that. It's, it's all good. It's some sort of panel flow. Let's not get bogged down by that. So basically, um, subscription, yeah, this is my own subscription. Um, I, a resource group in Azure is basically, you need to have a group where your resources live that is managed and you can do a bunch of different ones. I have a bunch of them. So I'm just gonna use my own Tim Bennix resource group that I built like months ago. Um, okay, so I'm gonna do my blog because we're gonna take my Gridsome website. That's actually this. So this website that is basically a static website that works really well and it's super fast and it's all fun. Gridsome, check it out, super cool. Also it uses Prismic as the backend. Um, so this is my Tim Bennix blog. Region, well, I am in Western Europe. So I'm gonna choose Western Europe. SKU, uh, if it's free, I, I don't know. Okay, so we're gonna have to connect my GitHub account, okay. Because of course it's gonna take my um, website or my the code that I have from GitHub. So in this case, this is pretty similar to how um, Netlify does it. They basically look at your Git repository. If there's a change on a certain branch, they will actually rebuild your code and deploy it on the CDN edge. I'm assuming this is the same. So I have my own organization, sure. My repository. Then this is my blog. Branch, just master. Okay, there we go. So, app location. Okay, so this is basically um, in that master branch where my app lives, which is in this case, the root. So I'm, I'm assuming, yeah, so the slash represents the root. Okay, so it's in the root, sure. If I had an API location, or if I had an API, I, I guess slash API is fine. And the artifact, I know that when I build my grids and website, it goes to the dist folder. So basically what they say with deployment terms artifact is basically the thing that comes out when you run the compilation of your project. So they take that thing, those are your static files and they put them somewhere. Okay, what are tags? Tags are name value pairs that enable you to categorize resources and view consolidated billing by applying the same tag to multiple resources and resource groups. Ah yeah, so if I had a whole, probably a, like a whole bunch of static apps and other things in Azure, I can just say, this is block. And then when I go for block, you find all of them. We have one, I'm not gonna need this. So review and curate. You know what? I kind of like this step-by-step -step thing. It's, it works. Um, you just need to know the concept of a resource group. And I, I, is it done? So there's a subscription, blah, blah, blah. Uh, okay, so, oh, now I can click create. Okay, sure. So we're just checking it, reviewing. Here we go. Initializing deployment. Deployment is underway. Now the scroll bar is gone, by the way. We're not stepping in. It's still very nerdy. It's a crazy interface, but you know what? If it works, it works. Deployment succeeded. Okay, go to resource. Holy moly. Um, I, I think it worked, guys. Well, we don't have anything yet, but it's on my resource group. This is my subscription ID. It's the master branch. And okay, so this is my GitHub action that I just mentioned. So let's have a look at that URL that they just created for me. So, Okay, so we don't have anything deployed on this yet. It just created my space, shall we say. Um, let's have a look, because actually there's these GitHub actions, right? So what, let's just click on this. Ooh, so I think because I connected to GitHub, they created an action for me. Right, so there's an Azure Static Web App CI CD action on my repository, Tim Bennix 2020. Okay, so, but why are there two of the same running? Cute. Let's have a look. 
Okay, so there's actually a build process going now. Ooh, that looks like Netlify to me, but now it's in GitHub. I like. I wonder, can I use like um, Azure Dev Tools or you know the um, Azure DevOps Git, or can I use GitLab? I wonder. I'd, I'd love to see that. Um, so, can we check if there's like a a console output of this thing? Okay, so they did a checkout. Oh, I can actually not see the the the, um, the output. Um, okay. Oh, oh. Okay, okay. Here we go. Okay, npm install happened. A few moments later. Oh, I think now it's done and it's actually copying files somewhere. I think it might be finished. Okay. Okay, so it's still running though. Okay, so I don't have an API, I know. Shall we just refresh? <gasps> oh yeah. And so basically I am now on Salmon Coast in Azure Static Apps.net and everything works. If you compare this to my experience of trying out Azure functions, this is ridiculously easy. We actually just set up something and it works. So if I now do a commit to this master branch here, it will actually do another action most likely like this job completed. It just runs it and redeploys it here. And you know, here my PWA stuff, everything is running. Why don't we just do this? Ooh, the new lighthouse. Oh no, this is actually not the new one. This is this is still the, the one older Chrome. This is not Canary. Well, let's see. It would be fun to see if this is different from the Netlify build, for example. Approximately 10 hours later. Okay, okay. Not bad at all. 98 performance. On my Netlify website, I have 99. I don't know what's the difference there, but... Um, Oh, by the way, is this the new? No, this is not the new lighthouse. Um, but what is this 93 here? I have errors in my console. Oh yes, of course. On my own browser, I'm blocking things like Google Analytics. So when there's errors, it, it gives you a, a stab here for this. Okay, anyways, um, that was ridiculously simple. So you can probably do a whole bunch of other things in here. You have some configuration stuff. Um, probably I can add environment variables, which is really cool. I have custom domains. I can do role management. You know what? Let's not for now go into this. Let's just keep it at this because if I can do it this easily, you can do that too. Um, so I'm impressed. This is cool. Um, this was a very smooth Tim tries. I'm, I'm impressed. I'm happy with this. Um, you know what? If this works well, I might switch to this. Um, for now, I'm really happy at Netlify. It's, it's been serving me well for a long time. So who knows, maybe when I do a new project where I use Azure functions and I need more stuff, like authentication and all that kind of stuff, I probably move to this because I have an account anyways. Um, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.